Good morning, uh, teachers, friends, colleagues. And my talk is Biologic Therapy for Coronavirus Disease. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean, I mean, rheumatoid arthritis. I, I think that the only way I can attract my other colleagues in is by bringing up this, this mega disaster called coronavirus. But uh, we're going to talk about rheumatoid. If this doesn't get people inside, I don't know what will. Well, we'll get on to the main talk, which is divided into two. And the first part will be a clinician's perspective for the, the average MD and uh, physician who has interest in rheumatoid uh, arthritis and treatment. So there will be very basic biologic therapy related questions that will be answered. And the second part will be the uh, few slides on IL-6 inhibitor tocilizumab, which is a new entrant. Uh, in the subcutaneous form, has been around for the IV use for several years. I've used uh, this for about 10 years now, and the subcutaneous form that we entering the market. So this uh, being the background, let's uh, get into the field. And uh, at the onset, let me be uh, very frank and let me make a candid uh, uh, confession. Every time I'm uh, tasked with the uh, the, the talk on something that's related to rheumatoid arthritis and talk on how to treat that arthritis. I feel like the, the very famous uh, protagonist from this uh, movie, an equally iconic movie, equally iconic scene, where this decoy has a gun, he, he, a, a revolver that has six bullets, and he is asking his henchmen whether they were successful in you know, getting down some of the good guys. And predictably enough, the, the good guys have been able to, uh, to hoodwink this, this decoy. So he plays this game of uh, Russian roulette and he's able to you know, really psych these guys up saying that now I have only three bullets in my revolver and you guys are three, so it's, it's a valid uh, equal. So the idea that you're playing Russian roulette in, in a patient with rheumatoid so many times uh, is, is something that struck me as a very <coughs> strong uh, relation. Uh, very often when we treat patients with rheumatoid, we find that the one set of disease modifying drugs do work. And even among those six bullets, those targeted therapies that I'm talking about, bullets are targeted therapies, uh, some of them may fail. So it's, it's very, very typical of this situation and for rheumatologists, there are times when we fail one or two biologics as well. And therefore, we have six. The, the various ones that we'll be discussing are those six. And the biologics uh, and targeted therapies uh, are uh, now the watchword of rheumatology. Uh, there's been a great change in the management because now we try to diagnose early. Uh, Dr. Professor Ashok Kumar alluded to the 2010 uh, Alitaha uh, paper that was about trying to diagnose rheumatoid early. Uh, it's also a classification criteria, but uh, the fact that you can diagnose it even less than three weeks of duration, especially if you have some of those important uh, uh, indicators, small joint involvement, the high CRP, and so on and so forth. So four, three to four, six weeks is, is something that you can diagnose a patient with rheumatoid. And that's because the Pyramid has been inverted. You want to hit hard and hit fast. Methotrexate failure, rare, but we're seeing it more often because uh, we are seeing patients who are uh, skipping doses, not using it to full dose, and that's where some of these targeted therapies come in. So targeted therapies are five, uh, actually six, five of them being biologics. You could target the TNFs, you could target IL-1, IL-6, you could target uh, Redux, which is anti-CD20, and a batacept, which is a uh, BT cell co-inhibitor. But there's one more target therapy that's oral, that's not a biologic, uh, strictly speaking. So, so the six bullet, as we keep alluding to and reminding you of that iconic character, uh, is, is those targeted therapies that we can uh, play around and, uh, and use on patients who, who miss their uh, treatment goals on regular therapy, which is methotrexate, substance hydroxychloroquine. Uh, there is that rare subset where 
a combination of methotrexate or a biologic may be used early if there is a very uh, bad set of uh, prognostic markers for the patients, very high joint count, very high CRP, female patient, and, and there you use a combination of uh, methotrexate and a targeted therapy as they were go. There's no longer a first line or a second line targeted therapy. Most uh, guidelines now mention that each or every one of them that is used as a targeted therapy is equally good as the other, and you could try uh, the, the patient's uh, comorbidities and requirements for disease treatment and choose one of those targeted therapies. Uh, the, what's new is uh, that JAK kinases uh, or JAKinibs are very rapidly taking over the market but that was once the domain for anti-TM therapies and uh, that's primarily because they have a, a, a very uh, large area of uh, immunological um, control and therefore can be used in a variety of diseases in a variety of disease states. Uh, when to use biologics? When there is severe disease, patients who are unresponsive to conventional agents like methotrexate, leflunomide, steroids, or they become dependent on steroids. If there are life threatening complications, uh, rheumatoid rarely has life threatening complications, systemic vasculitis being one. Psoriasis erythroderma is one example, although we're talking mostly about rheumatoid here. And sometimes you may want to use a biologic when there are special situations like pregnancy and you're not able to make do with hydroxychloroquine and steroids alone or there's advanced renal disease. So you, there are indications where some of these biologics can be used. Then the, the very important uh, indication is when they are intolerant to conventional therapy. And that's very commonly with methotrexate, nausea, vomiting, hair loss. Women don't want to uh, have these symptoms, especially for a very long duration, and that's where you can use one of these targeted therapies. Some of the practical points that uh, can be used for uh, initiating biology therapies, uh, the workup, uh, the basic plus chest X-ray, TB quantifron, MAN2, Hep B, Hep C studies. Uh, we must immunize, and uh, Dr. Professor Malvia reiterated the fact and was admonishing us rheumatologists that we don't use enough of immunization and we must be doing this uh, and ensure that at least the influenza, Trevenar 2313, Shingles and Zotamax, if, if it comes in the market, is used for uh, some, if not all patients. And practical point three, and this is uh, also uh, an important point because we are in the age of uh, digitalized uh, media, uh, this everything available in the click of the button, and you need to know what is the latest on the medicine. There were times when uh, TNF was associated with A problem or a B problem, and now we've been able to find that there are lesser problems that we can attribute directly to uh, anti TNF use. Similarly, for example, targeted synthetic uh, demands, uh, the uh, role of uh, DVT in, in such uh, patients, uh, elderly patients, was, was touted as a very important uh, uh, indicator of toxicity of these agents. But subsequently, it's become clear that those patients were uh, very high risk for DVT and pulmonary wallets to begin with, and therefore, it's now a lesser problem. So, keeping yourself updated, uh, looking at black box warnings, uh, getting to see, read literature from time to time, attending CMEs, and trying to take a consent wherever possible. Uh, some practical points, and this is primarily for the rheumatologist, to make real assessments based on numbers. I'll just quickly go over some of my uh, experience. 17 years, 200 patients, uh, plus 70 uh, of anti-TNF rheumatoid, but only 5 to 6% in, uh, infection rates, and only one patient with tuberculosis. Uh, Spondyl arthritis, much larger number, more than 600 patients. Cost limitations uh, allowed us to use anti-TNF therapies only for six months, but many patients took it for two, three years. Uh, 12 patients did develop tuberculosis, so roughly about 1 in 50 to 60 in my cohort of patients. And some of those other problems that are uh, UTI, pneumonia, and so on and so forth, but none of them died. That's at least something that I wish uh, continues the way it is. Uh, they, these are potent 
uh, medications, then they should not be used until you have good knowledge about these. Uh, rituximab is also one of these uh, uh, other targeted therapies. Is not just used for RA load, lupus nephritis, for anchor positive mastitis. This patient has a bad uh, pan sinusitis, has lung uh, nodules and cavities. Post treatment, uh, everything has resolved. Uh, rituximab for pemphigus, uh, very well treated. The patient is happy, is going to get married very soon. Now, all this was uh, related to a set of molecules that we've been using for a very long time. Uh, IL-6 uh, inhibition, and this uh, has, again, revolutionized uh, a lot of therapies, not just for rheumatoid, but some other areas like systemic vasculitis and uh, uh, GIA, systemic GIA. Uh, what is new here is that this is available now in the subcutaneous form, and it was hitherto available only IV, therefore it's a great uh, uh, chance to, to use on patients who probably don't do well on anti GNF or some other agent and would certainly be uh, one of your initial choices if the patient has very high CRP or has very poor progressive markers to begin with. Uh, we look at some of these uh, slides uh, and we go over them quickly uh, with the next uh, 15, uh, 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, this is the typical background for uh, rheumatoid arthritis pathology. So it's, it's the land, which is the bone, uh, which is the army, there's the synovium, or the sea, and that's navy, and then there's the air, air force. And you, you realize that the IL-6 is, is active all over, it's like the army, navy, air force, it's, it's the bad guy in all these three. Some of these other molecules, like the TNF, they are more malignant in the synovium and the bone phase, but IL-6, because of its, its role in, in inducing uh, osteoclastogenesis and, and rank rank ligand inhibition in the bone, as well as uh, rank ligand, uh, rank ligand related uh, <coughs> stimulation in the bone, as well as IL-17 related uh, bone damage, is, is active all over, and it's a supervillain, so to speak. So, what we also see is that over the past several years, uh, they've been tried, the, this, this molecule, the anti ion 6 tocilizumab has been done uh, over several uh, indications. And these are some of these uh, landmark trials that will inform the next set of slides, the option toward admission radiate. The entire spectrum of patients with rheumatoid who are either inadequate responders to anti tnf even here, they, uh, the anti IL-6 tocilizumab seem to work in about 50% of the patient. This is uh, ACR20, but uh, subsequent slides will show us that even ACR50-70 are achieved up to 30 and 12% in uh, anti-TNF inadequate responders. It's much better if you use it earlier because that's the, the virgin territory. It's, it's a disease where it has not become very complicated with its immune uh, networking, and that's where you get much better results. Uh, ACR 70 up to the 244, nearly 50% of them, which is, which is remarkable. There are some other benefits of uh, IL-6 use, and, uh, uh, and typically if you look at what we serve uh, uh, an average rheumatoid arthritis patient on his or her plate, are uh, uh, toxins, are uh, uh, scorpions, are uh, uh, bad, bad stuff. Acute phase responses, anemia, thrombocytosis, fatigue, wound, systemic osteoporosis. And this brings out a lot of other things like uh, fever, fatigue, weight loss, anemia, uh, uh, being uh, related to hepcidin, the CRP related uh, uh, cardiovascular uh, and, and uh, sugar tolerance related problems. And all this because of this supervillain IL 6. Uh, and like we discussed, uh, this is in all three phases, the air, the sea, and the land. It's, it's compared to the TNF everywhere, in the fluid phase, in the solid bone phase, as well as somewhere in the intermediary phases. Compared to TNF, it's, it's a bigger region, uh, at least from what we see here in this uh, uh, set of slides. Uh, 
uh, elevated hemoglobin levels were seen in a very large majority of patients who were treated with tocilizumab, even while they were not anemic, whereas there was not so much improvement in their hemoglobin content when they were treated with uh, anti-TNF or other regular uh, uh, synthetic demands. And this was primarily related to the uh, hepcidin levels that came down. Um, even patients who had anemia, there was a, a betterment of anemia in threefold. So uh, I'm not saying that you should use uh, tocilizumab preferentially for all patients who are anemic to begin with, but there is a distinct advantage in, in this subset if you were to use this uh, in uh, a patient who has anemia. Dr. Sandeep, sorry for the interruption. Uh, the organizer requested you to request you to finish in time. You are left with 4 30 minutes. All right. Now, a uh, couple of other slides in uh, implication in uh, coronary vascular disease. Uh, the patients who were admitted with angina had higher levels of uh, IL-6 and those who died had high level of IL-6, proving that it's involved in, uh, in, in cardiovascular diseases. There are problems with LDL, it increases the, the uh, inflammatory state for blood vessels. It's involved in these with better results compared to DNF. There is uh, some bone-related uh, uh, immunology that we need to go over, and that's related to the fact that it engages uh, the rank with rank lichen, causes osteoclastogenesis, increases the hole formation, the erosion formation in bones. It also increases IL-17, and therefore is able to worsen bone disease. These are some of those trials which mention about the erosion in joint space narrowing, and Typically, they are even better than anti tumor as this slide shows. Uh, we will go very fast to, to, to the set of two final slides. Anemia, because hepcidin is, is uh, reduced. Hemoglobin is more strongly improved than uh, TNF inhibitors. Better bone repair. We've been able to show by quantitative CT scan uh, results uh, that those erosions and Joint space narrowing gets better when you compare it with uh, an, an anti TNF, which is uh, one of the anchor sheep biologic agent. Uh, the reduction of uh, CV disease. So, finally, to summarize, uh, a biologics and targeted therapies are here to stay. Uh, IL 6 is a, is a uh, molecule that's been around, that's been around for a while but is now available in the subcutaneous form. And uh, best of luck with, 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 your, uh, with your revolver or your targeted therapies. You play Russian roulette with your patient or actually with, with your disease or the beast. I wish that you are able to succeed in the very first and the second uh, shot. Thank you for your attention. I'll be open to questions.